Our next speaker is Mr. Robert Kajiwara. Mr. Kajiwara is a native Okinawan and the founder and president of the Peace for Okinawa Coalition. His petition to stop the construction of the military base at Hanoko, Okinawa has over 212,000 signatures. Mr. Kajiwara received his BA in history from the University of Hawaii Manoa and is completing his PhD in history from the Manchester Metropolitan University. Aloha, Mr. Kajiwara. The floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you to everyone for tuning in today. We wish to remind the Council and the international community at large of the ongoing human rights violations being committed by Japan against the people of Luchu, also known as Okinawa, and I'll explain the difference in a moment. Please be advised that this video contains scenes of graphic violence and warfare that may be disturbing to some viewers. Since time immemorial, Lucha was a peaceful, prosperous, independent nation, maintained treaties with numerous other countries, including the US, France, and the Netherlands, and maintained close, friendly relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. Lucha was a center of international trade, finance, diplomacy, and cross-cultural exchange, with an expanded trade network so far reaching that 4th century Roman coins with Emperor Constantine's bust on them have been found on Okinawa Island. Historic sources indicate that Luchu was one of the richest nations in Asia in terms of per capita wealth. European visitors were astonished by Luchu's prosperity and quality of life, writing that they searched the entire nation but could not find even a single poor or impoverished person. Both Europeans and Americans nostalgically compared Luchu to Italy due to its wealth, commerce, and beauty. They also referred to Luchu as the cleanest nation they had ever seen. Luchu had a particularly close, friendly, and mutually beneficial relationship with China. Although China and Luchu are close neighbors and share a border, in all of history there is not even one known instance of violence or warfare between the two countries. They have always respected each other's sovereignty and boundaries and worked together in multilateral ways. This was a very important and long-lasting relationship for both sides. In 1609, Japan invaded Luchu, similar to what it had done to China and Korea a decade earlier. Per the terms of the China-Luchu relationship, China was obligated to protect Luchu from foreign invasion. At the time, however, the Ming Dynasty was in decline and experiencing many problems of its own, and was unable to help Luchu. From 1609 through 1879, Luchu was periodically forced to pay tribute to Japan. Unlike the special relationship between Luchu and China, the Luchu-Japan relationship has, since 1609, always been forced and one-sided. This was, of course, a hindrance to Luchuans. Nevertheless, the historical sources indicate very clearly that Luchu continued to be a prosperous, independent nation thanks to its robust trade and commerce, as well as its domestic agricultural, fishing, and environmental preservation policies. During the 19th century, Luchu was formally recognized by the Western powers as an independent country by signing treaties with other nations. In 1879, Japan again invaded Luchu, this time illegally annexing it against the will of Luchuans. Japan, of course, would go on to do the same to many other countries in Asia and the Pacific. Luchu requested China's help, but this time the Qing dynasty was in decline. Although China attempted to negotiate a settlement on Luchu's behalf, they were unable to save Luchu. Some Luchuans fled in exile to China, waiting and praying for the day that China would once again become strong enough to help drive out the Japanese invaders and restore Luchu's rightful independence. During this time, Japan changed the name of Luchu to Okinawa in an attempt to erase Luchu's history as an independent country, similar to what Japan did to many other countries. Japan inherited Luchu's treaties with other nations which is a legal acknowledgement of Luchu's sovereignty that Luchu has never willingly given up. Thus, according to international law, Luchu is still a de jure independent country, meaning that Japan's current occupation of Luchu is illegal. During the 1940s, Japan intentionally built an inordinate amount of military presence on Okinawa Island with the deliberate intent to sacrifice Okinawans in order to save Japan. During the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, around 150,000 to 200,000 Okinawans were killed, around one-fourth to one-third of the population. 
Japanese soldiers intentionally murdered thousands of Okinawan civilians, including women, children, and the elderly. They especially targeted Luchuan leaders in an attempt to prevent Luchu from regaining its independence. They also targeted those they overheard speaking the native Okinawan language, which at the time was everyone. Forced thousands others to commit suicide used Okinawans as human shields, and forcibly conscripted Okinawans, including children, into the Imperial Japanese military. It is said that every Okinawan lost a loved one during this three-month battle. Okinawans have never received compensation or an apology from Japan. To this day, Japan downplays and denies these atrocities the same way it denies its war crimes against China, Korea, and many other countries. In comparison, the East Timor genocide, which occurred during the 1970s and lasted for a period of roughly two years, resulted in the deaths of around 100,000 people of East Timor, or around one-sixth of the population. If what happened in East Timor is considered genocide, then certainly what happened in Okinawa is also genocide. Yet the Japan government and people get very angry at Okinawans when we talk about this and send us harassing and threatening messages. After the war, Luchu should have been included in the trust territories of the Pacific and had its independence restored. Instead, the United States military decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for bases. Okinawans are well known for our opposition to military bases. Thus, in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan without a vote from the Luchu people. This was an obvious illegal act because no country has the right to give another country to a third country. So you can see that Japan has no legal claim at all to any part of the Luchu Islands. Japan's entire claim is based on imperialism and aggression. Today, Japan continues its oppression against Luchuans in an attempt to destroy the Luchu nationality, identity, culture, history, languages, and environment. Japan's actions against Luchu strongly fit the definition for genocide as set forth by the United Nations Office on the Prevention of Genocide and the Responsibility to Protect, as well as the Framework of Analysis for Atrocity Crimes. Under the imperialist Japanese school system, Luchuan students are forced to learn Japanese history, culture, language, and identity and Japan does not allow for the teaching of Luchuan equivalents. As a result, UNESCO has recognized all of the native Luchuan languages as endangered. Japan continues to build a heavy amount of military bases in Luchu while continuing its aggressive policies towards other countries. The Japan government recently declared that it is legal for it to launch a first strike missile attack against another country. In the event of another war started by Japan, Luchu will again be destroyed due to Japan's militarism and imperialism. Every day Japan harasses, stalks, intimidates, and threatens Luchuans who peacefully resist Japan's oppression, including the illegal arrest and torture of Mr. Hiroji Yamashiro, the leader of Luchu's peace movement and a protected native citizen of Luchu. In February 2019, the government of Japan even detained me for 110 minutes at Kansai International Airport while transiting from Honolulu to Tokyo on my way to give a series of presentations about Okinawa. I was released only after the personal intervention by the Okinawan congressman Teruya Kantoku. Shortly afterwards, Japan sent police to harass my family, friends, and neighbors in Okinawa. Japanese riot police regularly remove, by force, Luchuan peace advocates, most of whom are elderly. The government of Japan recently declared that it is legal for it to place GPS surveillance devices on private vehicles without the knowledge of its owners, meaning that Japan could monitor the movements of Luchuan leaders without our knowledge. In 1960, the Japanese socialist leader Inejiro Asanuma was assassinated on stage during a live televised event. There is serious concern that something similar could happen to Luchuan leaders and peace activists if the international community does nothing to assist. Although Luchu was historically a wealthy nation with virtually no poverty, since the illegal Japanese annexation, Luchuans have been poor and oppressed, causing some Luchuans to flee overseas as economic or political refugees. Today, Luchu has a 25% child poverty rate. Around 30% of Luchu's arable land is occupied by the military, 
if the military contributes just 5% to the Luchuan economy, creating a huge economic deficit in addition to all of the environmental and social harm the military causes. The Japan government has claimed that the military bases are a resource to Okinawa, though the overwhelming majority of Okinawans oppose the bases. Japan is also purposely spreading false information about Okinawa, and Japanese people are even impersonating Okinawans online in an attempt to spread confusion and prevent Luchuans from obtaining international support. Former Prime Minister of Japan, Yukio Hatoyama, even stated that people from within the Japan government created fake documents claiming they were from the U.S. military in order to justify the military bases on Okinawa. Professor Yuichi Hosoya, who formerly worked as part of the Shinzo Abe administration and is a professor of international politics at Keio University, recently stated in a report published by the Center for Strategic and International Studies that Okinawan independence groups and peace groups are receiving money from China. This is not true at all. We have not yet received any offers of assistance from China or any other country. Although if you are interested in working with us, please contact us. Japanese journalists also spread false information about Lu Chu. For example, in October 2019, the historic Shuri Castle, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Lu Chu Kingdom, tragically burned down. Shuri Castle is a unique Lu Chuan castle, which was home to the Lu Chu monarchy for hundreds of years, long before Japan's invasion. It is structurally very different from Japanese castles. Yet the Japanese journalist for the Associated Press wrote a headline referring to it as a Japanese castle. This was then syndicated and mimicked by numerous other publications around the world. So you can see Japan is misrepresenting Luchu in the media and erasing our history, culture, and identity. Both Japanese and American mainstream media leave out the voices of actual Luchuans when talking about Luchuan issues. Japan also appropriates Luchuan cultural properties such as karate, which was added to the Olympics for the 2020 or now 2021 Tokyo Games. Karate, also known in the indigenous Luchuan languages as tea, is a unique Luchuan martial art developed by Luchuans over the course of hundreds of years. But the government of Japan refuses to allow a Luchuan karate team and instead forces Luchuans to compete on the Japan national team. Although Luchuans are still the vast majority population of Luchu, Japan is purposely trying to displace Luchuans and to move Japanese settlers into the Luchu Islands. Japan even attempts to stop native Luchuans from returning home to Luchu. Japanese settlers are also forcing native Luchuans to pay to use the beaches in Luchu in some areas. The population of Luchu is around 1.4 million with an additional 700,000 Luchuans living overseas. The population of Japan is around 120 million. Therefore, we really need international support in order to help protect our rights from Japan. Japan has ignored the UN's calls to improve its treatment of Luchuans. Though UNESCO recognizes Luchuans as an indigenous ethnic group and the Luchuan languages as endangered languages separate from Japanese, the government of Japan refuses to do so. In both 2010 and 2014, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination indicated their concern regarding Japan's discrimination against Luchuans, which Japan completely ignored. In 2008 and 2014, the Human Rights Committee instructed Japan to provide guaranteed rights to Luchuans, which Japan also ignored. Thus, the international community must take stronger action towards Japan to ensure the rights of Luchuans. In December 2018, I started a petition to stop the illegal construction of the new military base at Hinoko, Okinawa, which is home to a coral reef filled with hundreds of rare and endangered species, such as the Okinawa dugong. The petition has over 212,000 signatures on it. Nevertheless, Japan has ignored my petition. In February 2019, Okinawa held a referendum in which over 72% of the people voted against this new base, while an additional 9% voted undecided. Japan has also completely ignored this. Luchu is Japan's last remaining colony, and they are using our islands to continue their imperialist, militaristic aggression. 
There will never be true peace or prosperity in the Asia Pacific as long as Japan is allowed to continue its illegal occupation of Luchu. Prior to the 20th century, Luchu was a center of peace and prosperity, and it is critical for Luchu to resume that role in order for the region to stabilize and prosper. Therefore, we are requesting the assistance of the international community to help restore Luchu's rightful independence before it is too late. Luchuans have no interest in Japan's aggressive tendencies. We wish to once again make Luchu a prosperous, neutral, and demilitarized center of peace, trade, environmental conservation, and multilateral diplomacy in the Asia-Pacific region. If the international community ignores the plight of Luchu, it sets a very dangerous precedent for the world that international law is meaningless and that Japan or any other country could theoretically invade another country and not face any consequences. We are looking to work with other nations and NGOs worldwide in multilateral ways. If you are interested in working with us or like to speak with us personally, please do not hesitate to email us at contact at peaceforokinawa.org. You can also learn more at our website, peaceforokinawa.org. I'm Robert Kajiwara. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We look forward to hearing from you soon.